Hey, I'm Wes Field, a forward deployed architect here at Palantir, and I'm going to be showing you AIP response with Vision to automate your RFPs and due diligence questionnaires. Okay, let's dive into it. Okay, we're here in AIP response and we're ready to kick off a new RFP or DDQ. Let's submit one. We can download a template, which is really just a CSV that I already have prepared. It looks like this with some questions that you might ask Palantir. Let's go ahead and drag and drop in our CSV and we can submit it. I'll give it a name, I'll call it AIP now, and I'll give it a due date. We'll hit submit. And our questions are automatically being uploaded and answered by the application. Here, we can check on their status, see that they're in pending answer retrieval, which means that AIP Automate has already kicked off. And we can check that out here in the live monitoring view of AIP Automate and see that our questions are being answered. While that's happening, why don't we drop down into Workflow Builder and check out how our ontology is powering our application. Okay, we're here in Workflow Builder where you can see the ontology objects and actions that power our application and where our answers are actually going to come from. They're going to come from two sets of objects. First, these objects right here, which are actually created by GPT-4 with Vision parsing our documents. What do our documents look like? Well, they're in a media set, and you can see that they have lots of multimodal content. So beyond just text that you could parse out with uh, optical character recognition or OCR, but they have diagrams and tables and figures and charts and really important content that we want to be able to understand and reference in our answers. So moving back to Workflow Builder, that is what GPT-4 Vision is doing. It's creating these objects. But these objects come from static documents and they don't have approvals mapped on top of them. So the second source of answers is actually going to be powered by our approval workflow. As we go through and approve responses, we're going to build up an answer library that we actually will prefer over time because it's continually kept up to date by using the application and not dependent on static documents. So let's actually go through an approval process right now and see how this answer library is built up. Okay, we're back here in AIP response and AIP Automate has finished answering our questions, which come from two different sources, our knowledge base which is GPT-4's understanding of our documents and our approved library. So answers we've already approved in the past. Let's jump into one of the knowledge base questions and work through the approval process. Here, I'm gonna open it up and you can see that AIP Automate has given us a pretty robust answer to the question, describe your carbon reduction policy specific to the United Kingdom. But where did this content come from? Well, we can open the particular pieces of content. And here, this makes a lot of sense. Here we have a chart of our Palantir UK based carbon emissions. And we can look at the document ontology. So this will give us a really cool slice of what GPT-4 Vision has actually parsed out of our PDF. And it looks like a document with a number of pages that contain different multimodal media content, tables and text and charts and figures. Cool. But what if we wanted to kind of refine our answer a little bit here? Well, we could do that very easily. Let's add a little bit of refinement. So focus on scope one, two, and three emissions. And let's be more concise with 100 words. We'll hit generate here, and we can easily refine the initial answer to something that fits our needs. Yep, this is already looking a lot better. And so if I'm happy with this, when it finishes generating, I can go and replace my initial answer. I'll hit replace and submit. And now it'll add a user override to the initial answer that this is looking good. I can now go and approve it. And I can approve this answer because I'm the approver. But you'll notice that I'm not the approver for every question. I am the approver for environmental policy questions, but not for financial services questions. And that's all managed in the rules and library management tab. Here you can see that we have a number of rules that define categories that map to approvers. And you can easily go in and change any one of these rules by modifying it and providing a textual description of how the rule should be applied or adding a new rule. 
Let's jump back into my request. And let's say that Danny and I worked through all of our individual questions were worthy of provers. The next step of the process would be to mark this for a final review. So we could mark it for ready for review. And these different actions will map to different people in your organization. And the final action, which might not be Danny or I, but will be me for the purpose of this demo, is to approve the entire request. When I approve the request, you'll see that all the questions are moved to inner answer library. That means they've gone through the entire approval process and we're now ready to ship them. The final step here might be to generate a template with all our uh, responses really nicely presented. So we'll generate a template, which we can control in Notepad. So this is gonna generate a Notepad with all of our questions really nicely laid out and you can add some boilerplate here, your company logo, and this will be ready to have one final maybe edit of format where we can ship it as a PDF. And that would be the end of my workflow. You made it to the end, so maybe you love AIP response with vision as much as I do. So until next time, remember, builders always win. <laughs>